And we are live. Welcome, everyone. I am Fabian Holland. And this is Fabian Live, where we do it every Saturday evening. Uh, just get my chat box up. Here we go. All right. So let's get started. Uh, if anybody is watching live, then just uh, give me a quick hello or I can hear you or whatever, just to let me know that uh, you can hear me. I'll just double check because the other way, other day, I um, I didn't make the video public, but now it is public. I can see. All right. So welcome. Um, if you're new here, then my name's Fabian Holland. I'm a singer, songwriter, guitarist. Um, I'm from the UK, but I currently live in Berlin in Germany with my family. My partner's German. And uh, yeah. And if you're asking, well, why aren't you out playing guitar, singing and songwriting? Well, why are you on this live stream instead? Well, I kind of realized uh, a little while back when my son was born that I didn't want to be constantly on the road touring anymore and um, I kind of wanted to stay at home more, really. Um, and, you know, that's nothing against people that, uh, that, that tour a lot. I know lots of musicians that, that tour a lot and they're away from their family, but they managed to make it work, you know. Um, a lot of... A lot of musicians that have partners as musicians make it work. And that's a great way, you know, can, the whole family can then go on tour. Um, that's really cool, you know. But it, it just didn't work too well for my family and just currently for, for our situation, you know, and that's okay. Um, so I'm, I'm developing more online and I really enjoy this community I'm building um, in this channel, you know, I talk a lot about acoustic guitars and, um, and a lot of, a lot of stuff for singer songwriters and acoustic instruments and recording and microphones and stuff like this, you know, uh, Hey Ian, how's it going? Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Nice one. And, you know, I'm, I've uh, these kind of live streams have been developing because I'm doing it every Saturday now and uh, I kind of turning it into something a bit a bit different you know I don't want it to be like every kind of live stream hey guys waiting just waiting for everyone to come in we'll just wait and everyone you know because it is it is nice to for it to be like a like a live stream and that's really cool and I want that as well but um each each week I I want to kind of focus on a particular subject and kind of talk about that a little bit um, and and I'll be playing some songs as well and kind of but making the songs more kind of a, of a way of demonstrating about the particular subject that we're talking about um, so this one we're talking about developing a unique sound as a guitarist and songwriter so finding that musical identity um, and this one I find really interesting subject. And by the way, I'm no means a authority in this subject. I mean, you know, everything I say is my opinion. Um, might not be true. <laughs> it's just the way it is, you know. Um, but uh, I, it's more like I just want to start the conversation and start just, just talking about this subject because I find it really interesting. Um, so what the things that we're going to cover is what is a music, musical identity, what I think a musical identity is. Um, and by the way, if you just joined us, then say hi and give us, uh, let us know where you're joining in from. Um, I'm going to be trying this little, this, uh, this little thing today, <laughs> this little thing, um, this, uh, this software with the with the live stream today we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes you know it might not might not work but we'll see 
Um, yeah, if you could just, everyone could just drop down where you're joining us from. Uh, that would be really cool. And if you're watching it on the replay as well, then uh, do it as well. Why not? Always love to know. Um, but yeah, anyway, we, we're, we're covering what is a musical identity and what I think it is. Um, and then we'll get your opinions as well and stuff. And um, and then we'll look at how kind of how we can develop it. And I've got kind of five tips, I guess, uh, or five suggestions and five ideas about how to go about developing your musical identity. Um, yeah, so we got Ian. Ian's here. And Paul. Hi, Paul. Uh, you also, so Paul says, I've been there, sir. Gave up touring so I could be a father to my daughter. Understanding, yeah. Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, it's hard. It's hard being on the road and um, and being away for so long. I think particularly if you're a solo artist as well. You know, I can imagine if you're in a band, it could be kind of cool. Um I mean, you're still away from your family, but as a solo artist, you know, it's 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 quite lonely um, spending weeks and weeks on tour. It's so much fun. Don't get me wrong. I really enjoy it and I really loved it. And um, and, you know, of course, I'll be doing it again at some point. Um, it's just with, you know, with a small kid and with family, it's, you know, it can be hard. It can be hard for sure. And I think not enough people are kind of talking about that um in the music industry and uh and i want to be one of those people that that talks about it you know uh anyway so let's get started so musical identity um what is it well if you could drop in the chat what you think it is <laughs> yeah you do that but uh i think it's a unique sound, you know, as a guitarist, as a singer-songwriter, I think for me, uh, it's what makes my music recognizable to others, you know, and uh, when I, it's when I can, when I hear someone I, I really know, a musician that I really like and I really know, then I can instantly tell it's them, you know, and I think it's kind of a mixture of tiny things over time uh, that makes us unique, you know, and uh, yeah, it's it's these, so it's like it's musical decisions, it's things we take that we decide we go this way rather than that way, and it's getting used to. I guess it's your the audience as a listener. It's me getting used to this person making these certain musical decisions, and I know that, and I can tell that uh, when I listen back. To my favorite um, musicians but and it's also the techniques we use um, I can I can definitely tell certain musicians with certain techniques that they use particularly on guitar um, and the way with singing I feel it's the way we phrase words when we sing and the general kind of uh, yeah the general kind of feeling uh, of singing or the feeling of a song um, I think it's it's a mixture of lots of tiny little things that uh, that create our musical identity um, yeah so that's how I feel uh, but let me know in the chat what you think makes up a musical identity um, and creating how to create a unique sound um, you know, because this is, uh, I think there's many different ways that this can be done. And also it's an ongoing thing, you know, I feel this is an ongoing thing that we're constantly finding our musical sound, you know. Um, so I'll show you a quick little picture of me. You probably saw it on the thumbnail of this, uh, this video. How do I show you? Here we go. See if this works. So there's me. <laughs> uh, 
That's me as a 10 year old in 1996. And that's my mate, Nick. And uh, I think this was one of our first gigs, you know, that we ever had. Um, which is uh, pretty cool, you know. And uh, we were writing original songs then, you know. It was uh, a lot of original songs. And check out, I got a whammy bar. Whammy bar, at, uh, not a whammy bar, sorry, a whammy pedal. Not a whammy bar, no. Uh, a wah-wah pedal, sorry. I can't even say it. I haven't had one of those for ages. Obviously, I don't play electric too much anymore. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, hold on, here we go, it switched cameras. Oh, no, back again. And that's my mate Nick on drums, and uh, we were called Fab Nick. How how original, I know. Um, but that was, you know, that was the kind of the start of, of my journey, really, to my musical identity. And um, I remember feeling, back, even back then, like, I want to... I really need to, I was in a rush to get my musical identity kind of sorted already, even back then at a 10 year old, you know, which is completely ridiculous. But um, I remember having that feeling, you know, and not realizing that it takes years and years of developing and it's a constant thing that ever changes, you know, and I'm still fi finding, looking for, searching for my uh, musical identity, you know. And it's interesting to, probably to my listeners, um, I am I have, I probably have a very, a very, what's the word, prominent or sorted musical identity. It's very clear, potentially, to my audience. But um, to me, I'm still, it's still, I'm still looking for that, you know. Hold on. Got my hot cocoa this evening. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's go to the. We got a few comments in the uh, in the chat box here. Okay. We got Christopher. Hey, how's it going? Guten Abend. Hey. Glad you made it in time. Nice one. <laughs> And Ian says, for me, it's using distinctive instruments and tunings to help inspire the songs that I create. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Me too. Um, yeah, I feel like I, it, I want it to be almost more than that as well. You know, um, I want to I want to be able to play completely different instrument because the guitar that I play the Loudon I think it has a particular sound to me I can tell a Loudon being played absolutely it has a very particular sound especially the the O models um the bigger Loudons and I want to be able to if I could just play a, a completely different guitar even an electric guitar that I people are not used to me hearing that would be an extreme actually maybe we'll, we'll keep it with acoustic for now um and a completely different tuning you know that i use and i want people to still be able to recognize you know my playing i hope i hope but yeah absolutely you know it's it's these it's it's so many different things i think add to that musical identity uh ah hey mark from broom bisms is here hey mark how's it going <laughs> enjoying the channel great fantastic thanks i love it nice glad to have you here uh yeah christopher says it took me quite some time to find my identity as a guitar player i'm not creative i play pieces from other guitarists like uh, Phil Kigi, but I don't copy, uh, don't copy one on one. I give the songs my personal touch. Yeah. Sorry for my, I'm dyslexic, so I have to read really slowly, but you, you get the idea. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I give the songs my personal touch. Absolutely. Yeah. You can, I feel, 
I feel you can do it even with um, with covers. You know, um, you can still give your own your own sound with a cover. Absolutely, you know, um, people do that all the time. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. Great. So. Uh, I feel like I I don't want it to be just my voice or songs, um, but I want it to be my guitar as well, you know. So I want to, my guitar to be recognizable and have an identity as well. Um, and I feel I feel like it's it's easier for a singer. To be recognized you know or I feel as a listener I feel it's easier to listen to someone and recognize their voice immediately you know um, because everyone has such a, a recognizable a, such a different voice you know um, but with guitar I think it's it's harder um, to, to be unique in a way um, because you can change guitars you can change tunings you can you can kind of change the sound dramatically of what you're playing. Um, and also you've got to put your influence to that instrument, you know. Um, whereas with singing, you kind of are the instrument, if that makes sense. Um, so I feel like it's it's harder as a guitarist to, yeah, to be to be as unique as uh, as a singer. But this is this is kind of my goal, you know. I strive to be recognizable in, in to others in my music, rather than striving to be the best guitarist or you know to play the fastest or or anything like this. You know, I think it's I think it's kind of a little bit crazy to try and be the best guitarist in the world because it's <laughs> there's always going to be someone that's better than you, you know, um, and so I strive to be the most recognizable and to be the most distinctive, you know. Um, so this is kind of, I feel like, my goal. Um, to have my own voice when for with my guitar and on my songs and on my singing, you know, kind of everything. Um, so I'm going to do a... I'll do a little song now. And this song is off my first album it's kind of one of the first songs that I wrote um, before releasing on my first album basically um, it's not one of the first songs I wrote um, as a musician or as a as a person because you know I started writing songs when when I was 10 but it's kind of the first song that was um, that was written for this first album. And it's possibly one of my most recognizable songs. Uh, possibly. It's called like Father Like Son. And if you know the English folk singer and guitarist Nick Jones, he told me he really likes this song, so I thought I'd play it. All right, here we go. Like father, like son. Christmas evening and the family's all here 
from my seat Stand up to my feet Attempt to move my legs and hips to the beat Oh Arm goes left and left arm goes right Legs go front to back and then side to side mm, Head goes up and then it goes down I'm biting my bottom lip and making a frown Yes, it's true mm, with what they say that we all turn into our parents one day. Mm, to my shock, as cool as I am, I'm dancing the same dance as my old. Like father, like son, my chances are none Like a father, like son, oh, my time has come Like father, like son, my chances are none Like a father, like son, oh, my time has come Family, a wife makes one happy guy. So, me, oh man, has more than what just meets the eye. Mm, and I'd be glad to have half what he has, and I'd be proud. If I turn out just like my dad So that was uh, like father, like son from my first album. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, I, f I feel that has definitely 
a unique sound, I guess. Um, I'm I'm talking specifically about the uh, the guitar playing and the songwriting. Even even though obviously I have lots of influence from various different players and uh, various different music, I have a huge uh, folk influence. Um, uh, from the UK uh, and blues as well um, you know uh, but I hope I hope that I have some kind of um, unique sound when I play uh, and that's what we're talking about today so developing a musical identity uh, let's have a look at the chats what's going on here yeah Christopher says this Loudon and your voice are perfect match. Ah, oh, thanks so much. That's really nice. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's... Um, I love this Loudon. I did a video on it a little while back, and uh, it's got a very particular story. It was stolen from me, basically. Uh, but I managed to get it back, obviously. Um, but if you want, you can kind of check out that, uh, that video of that story. Uh, so it's... It's a very special guitar to me um, and kind of ir irreplaceable, really. You know, even if I got another Loudon from the same year, it wouldn't be the same. You know, it wouldn't be the same. It's got it's got my marks in it, you know, where I play. And um, I actually got actually bought another Loudon. Uh, this was years back. Um because I realized, oh, I need a, I need another guitar. I need another, a second, a second Loudon. Um, and for some reason, I, I didn't go for the same model. I should have gone for the same model. I was thinking, oh, it'd be nice to have a little bit of something different, some, you know, a bit of versatility, um, so I can sort of play other songs and get a different sound. Um, kind of made sense in my head, you know. But uh, it was an F. It, what was it now? It was an F model, which is like their mid-range size. Um, and I think it was Cedar top and uh, Rosewood back in size, I think. Um, I've forgotten the model number now. Um, but I, I just didn't get on with it. I didn't get on with it. And I sold it in the end. I sold it. Because um, it it just, I just never played it, you know. And it's sad when you never play a guitar. Um, I really try and play all of my guitars. Not equally, obviously. This one gets the most plays. But um, I, uh, I try and play all of them regularly if I can, you know. Uh, don't, don't like to see an instrument not used. Um... And Ian says, that's in my top three of your songs. Nice. Yeah. Lovely use of Dadgad. Uh, the words are so touching. Thanks so much. Yeah. So it's a, it's basically about me, my whole life. Not not my whole life, but, you know, you don't want to turn into your, your old man or your parents. You know, it's this thing of not wanting to turn into them, but then kind of realizing that what they have is really nice and that it would actually be really nice if i ended up turning turning just like my dad basically he liked that song as well <laughs> uh yeah so anyway uh moving on i'm kind of using this program here with it with this um with this live stream let me go to the next little bit um, and all right so I have a quote here by Jimmy Page and it says I believe every guitar player inherently has something unique about their playing they just have to identify what makes them different and develop it Jimmy Page said that so and I believe it you know, and this is basically what I'm trying to um, 
trying to do all the time <laughs> is is make my um make my guitar playing unique in some some kind of way um but the question is how we develop it and now i have a few kind of i guess tips and ideas and i love to know your opinions on these um and if you're watching this on the replay then also let me know your opinions um on on what you think um you know because these are just my thoughts and my ideas and it's not necessarily the the best or anything like this you know um but i i still believe it's it's a process and it's something that takes time um but yeah so anyway number one here we go is self exploration and so what i mean by this is basically a, a journey of self discovery to understand your musical preferences um and i think this is this is definitely an important one because you know you i think we take in so many of our influences and everything that we try we we kind of soak it in like a sponge and it kind of all and we churn it and we put it out in our own kind of way um so to explore different things um to take in influences and uh have a unique artistic vision i think as well uh exploring different genres and styles to find what resonates with you um this is just kind of basically the what i think everyone should be doing all the time and i try and do as much as possible um obviously it's 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 hard to take everything in all the time <laughs> you know i don't say i'm not saying you should um be doing every different genre uh, under the sun by no means but you know i think it's it's good to have an open mind and i try and do that um i mean you know for 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 the many years that i've been playing guitar i've i've gone through so many different genres you wouldn't believe some very embarrassing genres um that i'm not going to talk about right now but maybe in a future live stream <laughs> um you know but it's all it's 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 all important i feel i feel because i went through these things these genres um and i didn't stick with them you know i just tried them and and seeing what happens and and, and getting inspiration and and maybe i'll come back to that at some point or maybe that kind of helped me in some way with what i'm doing now you know um i i really believe that it all kind of adds and helps um that's why i try i try not to look at failures as kind of as as failures really it's all just it's just something that uh didn't quite work out and but i needed to try it and do it um to 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 be able to move on you know um yeah so that leads to number 2 which is hold on i have my little I have my little scene here i think these are a little bit squashed but never mind we'll just keep moving on number 2 is developing techniques um so this is my second tip is developing techniques and so basically once you know the sounds you're trying to get then it's about developing those techniques to help you get there i feel um you know because everything from here you know if you have an idea in your head about a sound or anything a song uh a melody a chord anything uh you know everything from here we need to get it to our to here to our fingers and then to our instruments or sing but we need to get it out some way and to get it out we need techniques to be able to to get those out um 
you know and it's so that's why it's i feel it's important to to develop techniques and to try different techniques you know um because you know there's a lot especially with guitar i feel there's there's so many different techniques it's such a, a versatile instrument um that it can be quite overwhelming you know i try and keep my techniques um to a minimum i guess um even though i probably do use a lot but i'd rather i'd rather use fewer techniques but really focus on those techniques and 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 get better at them um rather than using lots of many techniques and um you know but not actually mastering any of them if that makes sense um but yeah let me know let me know how you feel how anyone feels about um which techniques that they kind of like to use um i'm talking about you know anything from finger picking i use a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs um i like to use these uh not overuse them obviously because it, it, with any technique if you overuse it then it can just get a bit too much um yeah so that's that and then moving on swiftly we've got number three performance and feedback performance and feedback so this is i feel is number three is for my kind of tips on developing a musical identity um it's it's just performing performing regularly whether in front of an audience or through online platforms um i think you know what i like to do is when i'm developing a song i like to perform it as much as possible uh, and i feel like songs change the more you perform them um that's also something i find is is really interesting you know it's uh songs can completely change i can tell the difference between a song that i've just written that i've just written written sorry <laughs> um and a song that i that i wrote years ago that i've performed many many times in front of an audience you know um they 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 mature i find songs mature and they find their groove and the way to do that i find best is to perform them in front of an audience um yeah and uh getting feedback as well you know i find that's as well that can be good that's why i really like live streams because and uh and just videoing myself and recording myself because then i can be my own critic in a way you know i can i can watch this back and i can sort of criticize every little mistake or whatever that i'm using or i can change the song or i can i can say ah, i don't like that little bit and i can you know it can it can sort of change so having feedback as well is really important because before i was recording myself so much um i wasn't really receiving too much feedback course from friends and from other people the musicians and stuff so that's good but if you haven't got that um then it can be hard to it can be hard to uh to know what is working and what isn't working you know uh, i'm not saying what necessarily what hard to what's what's sounding good and what's not sounding good but what's working and what's not working what is uh resonating with an audience and what's not you know this kind of thing uh, so yeah positive and constructive feedback um, can definitely help you grow for sure and uh, yeah let's let's have a look in the the chat here uh, yeah Christopher says the biggest problem with feedback is I have the feeling nobody cares about my music yeah I mean this can be something is like 
if you don't have anyone around you that is um that is really that you feel doesn't care that can absolutely be a hard thing yeah absolutely um I was, you know, for a point in my life, I was busking in Bristol. If anybody's been to Bristol in the UK, um, or anybody hasn't been to Bristol in the UK, you should should really go there. It's a great city. Um, it great for music. It's just vibrant city. In there's so many different venues and and, and bars that's just constantly playing music. It's great. Anyway, it's great for for buskers as well and I was just kind of living on friends I had a lot of friends that were studying there and I was just kind of living on friends floors and sofas and just busking for a year or so but that was um that was really great but but at the same time I was I was practicing but I wasn't really receiving much feedback through all this um so I kind of yeah I kind of felt that at the same time similar to what maybe you're feeling right now um i wasn't really getting any feedback on my music um so i felt yeah i felt a bit lost in a way and lonely um but what i did start doing is going to open mics a lot um in in bristol there's um so many open mics and uh if you have any near you that can be a really great way to 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 meet people and kind of uh get kind of feedback from other people you know um i found that really good uh also to to hear what other people are doing as well you know because if you're just making music in your in your home (laughs) and no one hears it um then uh or if you don't hear other people or if you just if you're just listening to people on online you know it can be it, that can also be a little hard to hear because it's just there's so many different there's so many people online and there's so many different amazing people um that obviously that are, are better than than a lot of us um but i find yeah open mics have you tried open mics, Christopher? Um, I don't know if there's any near you, but, you know, there's there's generally open mics around and they can be really good. Um, done a lot, a lot in my time. Uh, good to, to kind of meet other people, you know. Um, but if you want, you know, you can, you're, you're more than welcome to send me some uh some of your music or send me a link or something you know i'll be happy to um to have a listen and give you some hopefully constructive feedback on it for sure you know i'll be happy to do that um yeah so i forgot what number we're on now we're on three so let's jump to four number four is confidence and authenticity so yeah with this it's uh staying true to yourself and having confidence in your artistic choices um this one is i think possibly when you're just starting out is kind of maybe hard to know what is your what is true to you um but i definitely feel like i kind of i know what's uh what is true to myself you know now um now i've been playing for for a while um and i feel like i can i can confidently make these uh authentic um decisions <laughs> musically speaking <laughs> all other decisions are just all over the place i'm a mess but uh musically speaking no i'm i'm making uh confident decisions for sure mm. and uh yeah trying to be as authentic as i can with everything you know 
with everything that I'm doing um, and trying to embrace embrace unique qualities and quirks as well and uh, you know whatever that may be because I think we can get uh, we can compare ourselves a lot you know to other people we can compare ourselves to other people and um, that sometimes can be a bad thing I find you know because um, especially with singing I had a big problem with singing um, because I'm I see myself as a guitarist first and uh, a singer after you know the singing is like I've never been trained in singing I've never had one lesson in singing um, really I have no idea what I'm doing but you know I just uh, open my mouth and stuff comes out so that's it <laughs> that sounds a bit weird um, no but it's uh, it's it, it can be I and in the past I compared myself a lot to other people you know other proper singers um, that obviously knew what they were doing um, and I feel like my my I felt I, I kind of put myself down because I didn't sound like them you know um, and I think that can be a bad thing you know because uh, we're, your, we're unique in our own way and I didn't realize that and I didn't now I kind of realize and I, I try to emphasize these unique qualities uh, in my voice, in my playing, in my writing, everything. I try and I try and see that as much as possible and and try and emphasize them as much as I can, you know. Um, but again, going back to Bristol, I had um, a friend of mine was also doing the singer songwriter. Um, what do you call it? Going from pub to pub doing singer, doing um, open mics. That's what it, uh, doing the open mic circuit. That's what I meant to say. Uh, a guy called Matt Woozy, who is also actually living in Germany, not Berlin, but uh, in uh, south, southwest Germany, I think he's living somewhere. Um, if you haven't heard of Matt Woozy, check him out. He 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 plays a lot of sort of blues influenced stuff, um, acoustic guitar, and he's got a, a really amazing belter of a voice. Um, and you know, I compared myself. I was like, <laughs> I was man, why why can't I do that? I've why can't I have a belter of a voice? Um, and and I kind of felt like I should, I should be able to do that, and I should work on that, and that's what I should sound like. Um, but really, you know, it's just not my voice. I just haven't got a belter voice. You know, I've I, I got quite a quiet voice, and and I'm I've kind of learnt to embrace that and and create songs that emphasise that in a way. Um, so it's it's finding out what what these quality unique qualities you have and then developing that and embracing that basically is what what I'm saying. And then we're on to number 5 already. Wow. On to number 5. Uh and number 5 is Embrace growth. Very similar to to the last, what I just said. Um, is, yeah. Um, embracing growth. It's an ongoing process, you know. It's an ongoing process and embracing the process. I find it's like when I had these thoughts as a 10 year old kid and being frustrated that I didn't sound like my heroes, you know, actually remember <laughs> being frustrated because my voice hadn't, wasn't low enough, wasn't, hadn't broken. You know, I was still, I was, I was a little 10 year old kid and I was just so angry because I wanted to sound like these, these, you know, these 
30 year old middle aged guys that I was listening to. Um, and, and I was just frustrated and I didn't realize that I just needed to embrace the process and it's, it's an, an it's a long game, you know, and I, you're not going to develop your sound in the first couple of years or anything. Um, it's, it's an ongoing thing, you know, and it will, it will change and potentially my songs and my playing and my singing will also change from now in and in 10 years, in 20 years, you know, um, and and also learning from setbacks, like I said before, you know, um, continuously challenging yourself to evolve as an artist. I think this is something that is really is really important. And uh, yeah, learning learning from these setbacks. I don't like to say them, call them failures. They kind of setbacks. Um, you know, it's it kind of it develops us and it makes us who we are. I find, you know, um, and yeah. So that's that's kind of my thoughts on how we develop our musical identity. You know, and just to just as a few musicians that to mention. Um, that I listen to a lot. I've probably mentioned them a lot on previous live streams. Um, one of them is Kelly Joe Phelps, who unfortunately passed away recently, but um, he's a massive influence on my music. But I've been listening to him for so long, and I feel like if I hear him, if I hear one of his songs before he even starts singing, you know, I know it's him. Um, and it's something it, that is, you know, it's it's really hard to describe <laughs> these things, you know. Um, and but when you hear it, you just you just know, even if you've never heard the song before. Um, and I find it particularly so for singer songwriters, if it's guitar, just guitar and vocals, you know, if it's just them. I think if there's a band involved and it's a like session musicians and it's if it's a different band each time and maybe they're exploring different sounds then it can maybe it maybe it be harder to to actually recognize that it's them but if i heard a song that i'd never heard before from kelly joe phelps then i reckon i could recognize him before he even starts singing um and another guitarist is pierre benson that I've mentioned as well. He's a French um, French guitarist and he uh, he plays Loudons as well and he plays exclusively in Dadgad. Um, but he doesn't sing. He does actually sing sometimes, but mainly doesn't sing. Um, but he has a very particular sound um, and I feel like I would, I would be able to recognise his... Uh, his playing, his music. Um, but, you know, let me know if there's anyone else that you would be able to recognize. Who do you think you could recognize before they start singing as well? Before they start singing um, just through guitar? Um, because I think it's a lot easier to recognize someone when they start singing, you know? Um, and it can be just, I find it, it can be just the feeling of a song, you know, it, it just have that feeling. It's, oh yeah, that's the feeling. That's so-and-so. Uh, Martin Simpson is someone else that I feel like I would, I'd be able to recognize a song of his. Um, if there wasn't other instruments involved, if it's just his guitar and he just starts playing guitar and it's a song I'd never heard before, I reckon I'd be able to recognize him uh yeah but let me know in the comments if there's anyone else that you uh that you personally you reckon you would be able to recognize before they start singing um we'll go to the comments again getting some nice comments in today nice one um 
given that you've uh, Ian says, given that you have tried various genres, what makes you decide on the folk acoustic approach? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, hmm. I think like you know, I I actually started on not really folk music, but I started on blues. My dad got me playing guitar and he he showed me a lot of blues music because he was really into that um and acoustic i started on acoustic i actually started with on classical guitar i started with classical guitar lessons um which didn't last very long <laughs> i got to i i didn't even get to a grade to be honest um i I went through a few books. I, I got proficient at it, but, you know, it was very much like work for me, you know, the classical guitar. Um, and then when I get home, you know, I play some Johnny Be Good or something, um, you know. Uh, but yeah, my dad was into blues where he was into sort of rock and roll and uh, some of the electric blues as well, you know, this sort of stuff. Um but also the the early pre-war blues as well. Um, that's why I'm I'm also really into blues. Um, you know, so that was my first that was my first uh, influence. And you know, I feel like you just come back around, don't you? You know, I I went through so many different genres and did the whole electric guitar thing, and you know, I I was even doing electronic music at some point in my life. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, it just comes back around and eventually I was just, I just wanted simplicity in my music and in my life and just blues and, and folk music was kind of there at the right time. Um, I don't remember exactly what drew me onto it, but, um, it's, you know, and I feel like blues especially pre-war blues this kind of this you know this delta mississippi blues um it's very similar to to folk music the early folk music you know so uh and in a way it is kind of a, a subgenre of folk music you know um so uh, yeah that's i think and also because because i'm english i think maybe i wanted to find out discover more about English folk music, um, because at a point, um, I think it was like in my late teens or something, I didn't really know much about it, so I just discovered that whole world and just got into it that way. But yeah, um, and yeah, Christopher says, I love Pierre Ben Susan, yeah, uh. Who's that? Peter. Peter. Oh, can I pronounce this right? Here we go. Ratzenbeck. Beck. Ratzenbeck. Peter Ratzenbeck. I've never heard of him. I need to check him out. Peter Ratzenbeck. I'll check him out right now. I'm gonna go and put him. Put that on a save that. Okay. Who is that? Okay. Yeah, he, okay, so he's like a guitarist. Does he sing as well? Is also a good example. Um, I have to hear the first note to know him playing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you could, you're allowed to hear the first note for sure. Um, okay. Okay, Peter Ratzenbeck. Is he, is he Austrian? Yeah, I think he's Austrian. Yeah. Nice. I'll check him out. I've never heard, never heard his stuff. Cool. I uh, always like to listen to new, new people. Um, and Ian says, I've heard various versions of nobody's fault but mine, but yours is the best in my opinion. Ah, oh, that's nice. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. That's really nice to hear. Yeah. Um, ah, oh, that's a great song. That's a great song. I don't, I feel like I don't even do it justice, to be honest. It's really, um, 
I actually, I've been playing that for so long, I feel like I want to re revisit that and kind of do it in a different way, I feel. Um, I find like I'm, with my old songs as well, I try and redo them in different ways. Um, this is something I'm trying to do at the moment, is look at my old songs and how can I, you know, because when you've been playing a song for so many years, it gets kind of old and stale a little bit, you know. Um, so I'm trying to revitalize my old songs for me, really, you know, as, as so I enjoy playing them and give them a, a kind of a new, a new spark, really. Uh, yeah, but this is this is something that I'm trying to do. But thanks, yeah, that's really nice to hear. Thanks, uh, Christopher says uh, yes, he's Austrian. But he sings rarely. Okay, like Pierre. Yeah, yeah. I think Pierre does a lot. Uh, I think that Pierre did some live. I saw Pierre Bensusen once um, in London, and he did a bit of singing live. Um, but uh, yeah, but I don't think he he sings. I don't think he sings too much on his music. All right, cool. Um, I'm going to do one more song. And then if you have any more questions or thoughts or anything like that, then um, just drop them down and make sure you put a question mark if it is a question, because I'm using this program that it picks out all the questions for me and then puts them in a nice, neat kind of list at the end, which is nice. <laughs> so I don't have to sieve through. Um, so I'm going to check to make sure I answered everyone's questions. Um, but if you have any more then uh, of about anything, you know, can be about anything, then um, please feel free to do that. Um, yeah, here we go. So I'm going to play a song now. So I went from one that I, on my first album, now I'm going to play a song that um, I haven't even released yet. And I've played it a few times in these live streams, so I apologize if you've if you've heard it many times before. Um, just need to change something. Hold on. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. And this is um, this is about it's called memories and it's kind of about uh, it's just about a memory I have of going to the beach as a kid. <laughs> That's really it. <laughs> and I'm talk about these these memories and it's more kind of these um, kind of snapshots of memories that I have. It, it's not about a particular moment or anything like that. It's these kind of tiny little moments that I have. And a lot of them are just to do with the smell and to do with kind of other senses that I remember rather than the actual place, if that makes sense. Um, you know, and I find this song is developing the more I play it. So I, I quite like to play it a lot um, and, and, and hear it develop. Um, yeah, so here we go. It's called Memories. the southern coast what I enjoyed the most was the sun and the lovely sea fresh sea air it smelled the best when the tide was out we used to run and shout 
Release the burden The memory of that feeling was so comes up to my knees It's these moments and memories drive too far I roll my window down radio on and blasting cruising steadily who can see the sea he's the first to make a sound and I'm the first to say what I have It's on my nose The water comes up to my knees It's these moments and yet to be released <laughs> okay so I'll just make sure uh, I've covered everyone's questions uh, one sec here and uh, yeah looks like we're good we covered everyone's questions so thank you so much everyone um, I hope you enjoyed the live stream and I hope you enjoyed the subjects, I really enjoy talking about things like this. Uh, it just really interests me. And um, I like to hear everyone's opinion on this, you know. Uh, so if you're watching this on the replay, then please feel free. Let me know what you thought about this uh, subject. And let me know uh, what your opinion is on creating a musical identity. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. I appreciate you so much and have a great evening and I'll see you again next week. Bye.